Niels. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you everyone who's coming back for the second part and everyone who's joining us for the first time. This is such an exciting segment. They all are, but acknowledgement. What a beautiful topic. I mentioned briefly last time that when Steve first spoke about acknowledgement at the Phoenix event, I had no idea what, what acknowledgement was and what it could be and what it would do to my life. And I'm not going to do it, do it justice, which is why I have, I have our, our two experts of acknowledgement. I'm sure there's many, but what, what, what happened was um, after, after the Phoenix event, Steve spoke about acknowledgement and really just, you know, the, when you're so present, when you're, when you're fully being and you're showing up and you don't hold back from appreciating anything besides that that's a reflection of who you're being, but when you learn to look at that, when, you know, I, I'll be honest, when I came back from the Phoenix event, I tried, I don't usually convince people of anything. I don't try to convince people, but I, I sometimes like to share like, hey, listen to this idea I heard and I shared it with family. Um, it didn't go as well as I, I had planned, but I had shared the idea of being able to acknowledge someone and appreciate someone just because, just because like, like, hey, Liz, I love your hair. Like just an acknowledgement. And for me, I remember I have one of the notes that I had carried around in my pocket for months that I walked away from an event was the difference between acknowledgement and maybe flattery. I don't remember what it was. What were the two difference? Acknowledgement is simply acknowledging, appreciating with nothing attached. Why shouldn't I, I, I let you know that you, I love your glasses. I love your haircut. I love how you spoke. I love how you're showing up. That's it. I don't need anything from that. The power of acknowledgement opens up my being that I get to be someone who just sees amazing things everywhere. I, I start to learn to, besides look for appreciation, but to embrace it, to, to be so okay. One of the first things that I had spoken to Steve about or messaged him about or had some sort of conversation was what's with the loving you? What, what, what is with all the loving you? There's a lot of different layers to that, but the basic thing is, hey, I get to fill myself up with that and pass it on to you. So I basically make myself feel good. When I'm loving you, I'm looking for opportunities. I'm just appreciating you. I get to fill myself up with that appreciation and I'm just reflecting that back to you. And I start to look for that everywhere I am. And then I start seeing it. It shifts my being. And it's, 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 the, it's like, you know, and it also is a great, when I'm, when I'm not interested in looking at myself, it's like when you're not feeling great, go look for something to appreciate in someone. Go look for something to acknowledge. So I see um, Dave Orton and Ben Alsop and in, in, in how they've shown up in the group and modeled acknowledgement. Eric Lofholm has a weekly challenge and there's usually an acknowledgement challenge and a lot of people get to practice and show up how they acknowledge. But it really stood out for me when Dave would acknowledge someone, it's, it was, it like knocks you over. It's like, who is this guy? I, I had never met Dave until yesterday. And he was not in, in person in Phoenix. He watched the event. And it's, whoa, that, this is amazing. And, and you don't have any doubt. He doesn't want anything. It's not like, like, you're like, like he, he must want something here. He's just like bored and like, today I would like to acknowledge and like, boom. Then you get this whole like birthday surprise. And it's not even your birthday. And it's just like, that is powerful. And I saw Ben doing the same thing. So I invited both of them to, to share with us your take on that. How can we do that? What, what, how does that come into how we're being? And just like you being here, everyone being here and Dave being here and, and Ben sharing that with us. It's just, 
I'm so excited to, to be in the presence of that because it's, it's like the definitive power of what we're talking about here, who we're being and showing up as. And so Dave, please take it away. Thank you, Rafal. Thank you so much for, for creating this. It was so lovely to meet you yesterday. It's so, I just wanted to tell you guys that Rafal is taller than he looks on <laughs> camera. And so am I, like, I'm a big guy. I and was it, actually so, more surprised by you. <laughs> so yesterday he came to visit me and Penny and uh, he's at the store and I'm expecting to see this, you know, about five foot 10 guy. And no, Rafal's all six foot three of him. He's taller than I am. I'm six, one and a half. I'm like, <laughs> Give him this great big bear hug. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. But thank you, Rafal, for, for creating this. Thank you for being the source of this event, this experience. Um, and I want to thank Ben for being, um, being with me on this as well. And uh, Lindsay, you might need to unmute Ben because <laughs> it looks like he muted himself. But I also want to, I want to acknowledge, so I want to acknowledge Rafal for standing for something and for being flexible for when things didn't quite turn out the way you wanted them to and embracing reality, not like, not like making reality wrong. And Rafal is a master of this. He's a master of responding to reality in, in the way that he, that he does. And it's beautiful. Thank you, Rafal. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thank you. Uh, today is five years ago. Five years ago today, I was with Steve Hardison in, in his office. And, uh, when I got there, I, I didn't realize it was his birthday. And uh, he, shared, he shared two hours with me of his birthday. And uh, I don't remember what was said at that event, at, at that experience, at that meeting, at that session. <laughs> Thanks, Alex, I got that. But I remember that he acknowledged me and he said, Dave, you have the most powerful mind I have ever encountered. I had no idea what he meant. So I, he had to explain to me what he meant there. And uh, I'm not gonna go into that. What I would like to go into is that Steve Hardison is one who creates people by acknowledging them. In the, in the book, there's this part where he's talking with uh, two people uh, Raghav Prakash is, Prakash is one of them, and the other one is, um, oh goodness, her name escapes me, Cannon, right? Miss Cannon? Okay. And he's creating them. It's like the difference if you create someone, if you acknowledge someone to someone else, if you create who they are, the listening that, uh, or the way that a person listens to them is changed. Like, if, if Steve calls me up and says, Dave, I need you to talk to this person, but before you talk with them, I want you to understand that this person is someone who is changing the world by who they're being. This person is someone who is powerful with their, in the face of, of difficulty. This person is someone who is, is uh, choosing to create after going through massive difficulty in life. You know, then I listen to that person. I'm borrowing the power that I have of listening to Steve and, and I'm taking that and listening to this person as though they are God with a small G, as though they are the most important person that I could possibly listen to in this moment. And that changes everything. It, it's, it creates power where there was before nothing. I would have just thought this person was another, another person. Now, here's the beautiful thing. They are just another person. <laughs> and they are God with a small G. And I am, and you are, and Rafal is, and Ben is, and Lindsay is, Casey is, Matthias is, Philip, Bartu, I mean, Andreas, everybody that's here, you are that. I am that. We are that. That, in a nutshell, is the power of acknowledgement. Because when I acknowledge you, I can only acknowledge you for those things that are already present in me at some level of development. When you acknowledge someone else, all the boats rise. You are rising the tides, raising the tides of being in that conversation. Then I wanted to give you a moment now and, and just have you share, you know, or, or invite you to pop in and share what you're, what you're, what's up for you right now. Thank you, Dave. What's up for me right now? 
Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the miracle of us all being here. The technology, the commitment, the being, For me, that's a miracle. And when Steve talks about being nervous last night, hoping to do a good job, that's me. And also, I'm sure it's Rafal as well, and Dave and everybody here who wants to deliver an amazing experience for everybody who's in attendance, who wants to participate wants to be here. I rewind back 12 weeks. And the first time Rafael talked about the Chicago being event, my instant reaction to that, my creation was I'll be there. I didn't know how. I just knew that I wanted to be there because this is about serving and giving and being the difference in the world from a space of understanding my own power. And the invitation here is to see that Rafael created a miracle with his being by allowing himself to get out of the way of what he thought he wanted to see and allowing it to be what it is, which is this. And the reason why I'm bringing our attention to the idea of that being a miracle and the technology that we're all using right now to connect from every corner of the earth, as you can see behind me, is that when we notice the miracles in the world that are around us at all times, we can start to notice the miracle that is within us. <clears throat> and this really shifted for me because I never used to acknowledge anybody, including myself. I never used to acknowledge even my own presence on this earth. In fact, I minimized myself, I hated myself to the point where I didn't want to look in the mirror. I hated who I was being with a passion to the point where I hid away. I didn't want to be seen, I didn't want to share with anybody. And quite frankly, I looked around me at the world and every person that I saw, I treated with the same disdain that I treated myself. So. When Steve invited me to see the power of acknowledgement through how he acknowledges people and how he acknowledged people when I met him in London in 2019, I started to see a different way for myself. I started to see a way that sees the beauty and the magnificence in the world around me in every aspect of life, in the plants, in the trees, in the birds, in the insects, in the people, especially the people. Because, you know, I've been to places where I thought I'd made it. And I've been to places where other people thought I'd made it because they acknowledged me for what I had and who I was being in terms of materialism, in terms of achievement, in terms of accomplishment. And yet, I still hated myself when I got to that place. So when Steve made this invitation, I was like, how could this make a difference in my life? Look, I've suffered for so long feeling separate, feeling distanced, feeling apart from others. Because of my judgment, because of how I saw them, because of how I created them. You know, where I live at the moment, I walk down the street and there is an opportunity to judge on a regular basis, because somebody's not wearing the same nail varnish color as me. Or somebody's, you know, doing something that maybe 
I don't understand completely. But ha what happened when I saw this difference in being able to choose to consciously acknowledge the miraculous in everything around me and see that in the people, the divinity, the spark of the universe that exists within all of us, I started to recognize the greatness because I started to look at the greatness in other people. I started to see the greatness within myself. And I truly believe that when we're living from a place of acknowledgement that is loving, we're consciously looking for the best in others. Like I go out there at 5 a.m. in the morning on the streets, sometimes sweeping the streets, just because I want to experience sweeping the streets from a place of joy, from a place of real presence. And I remember one day, about 4 a.m. in the morning, I decided to go outside and sweep the streets. And I was a little down the road from where I live, and there was police cars flying around with their lights on at 4 a.m. in the morning. And I'm out there cleaning these streets, and I'm like, wow, it's dark out here. It, you know, what might happen? You know what? I'm going to trust that the universe has got my back. So as I'm cleaning these streets at 4 a.m. in the morning and the police cars are flying around, I'm looking around me and there's a couple of people hanging around on the road. You might want to call them unsavory types if you were judging them. And I would admit that I judged them for a second. One of these particular people was walking down the road towards me. I'm like, oh no, probably not said like that, more explicit. <laughs> Let me say, what I noticed is that the corner shop, the off license where people go to buy alcohol at 4 a.m. in the morning was open. And this man carried on walking straight past me. He didn't even notice me. And I'm stood there, I'm like, oh, this guy, 4 a.m. in the morning, he's definitely going to the shop to buy alcohol. Is he going to cause me trouble with the police flying around? What am I going to do if that happens? And for a second, I had about a million and one thoughts going through my head about what he was going to do and who he was going to be and the problems that he might cause me because of what I created him to be in my head at that moment. And he walks up to me and then picking up the rubbish. You wouldn't believe it. I must have filled about six bags of green rubbish, green bags full of rubbish. And this man walks over and he stops and he goes, I've got something for you. And I'm like, what's this guy got for me at 4 a.m. in the morning on the streets? What could he possibly have for me? <sighs> Please don't punch me in the face. <laughs> I don't want to have a punch in the face. And he puts his hand behind his back <laughs> and he goes, this is what I've got for you. And in his hand, He's got a bottle of Dr. Pepper. And I'm like, I thought this guy was going to hit me around the head with a glass bottle, whatever he was going to do. He came over with a bottle of Dr. Pepper and he gave me the Dr. Pepper. He says, you deserve this. You deserve this. And I'm like, thank you for seeing me for acknowledging me, for loving me, for being the miracle at that precise moment that showed up at 4.44 a.m. and said to me, you deserve it. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because in that moment, I realized the power of acknowledgement because I felt it. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I felt not just the acknowledgement from this complete stranger, who I'd never met before, who decided to go in the shop and buy me a bottle of Dr. Pepper and come over to me and see me in a way that was like, you deserve this. But he also trusted me to tell me some of his story. And when I felt that, I was like, maybe I can do that for someone else. Maybe I can be 
the light in the dark for somebody else by inviting them to believe in their own brilliance and to acknowledge the miracle of who they are. So for me, the acknowledgement, the power of acknowledgement comes from the deepest place of recognizing that we all look different, but we're all the same. And there is beauty and magnificence in every single one of us. We just have to look for it. And definitely look for it within yourself. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Rafal. I love you all. Appreciate you listening. Thank you, Ben. That was fantastic. Really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. And uh, I, I wanted to just say how powerful it is to be here. You see, one of my favorite songs <laughs> is from Coldplay, and there's a line in it that says, sweep the streets that I used to own. <laughs> That's Ben also. Man was a millionaire, had it, had it all, had everything, and lost it and became a miracle worker, became somebody who can change a person in a conversation. And thank God that he went through that loss and became that. I wanted to talk about a couple of distinctions with regard to acknowledgement. The first one is the distinction of receiving acknowledgement. So there is a, there, I grew up in a culture where it occurred to me like uh, giving was perfectly fine, but receiving was not okay. Like you could give charity, you could give time, you could give service, and you had to be completely self-sufficient, <laughs> which meant all reception channels were shut down, only the giving channels were open. And uh, that's fine, except that it doesn't work. <laughs> so there's this, um, this distinction that, uh, that Steve Hartson shared with me, I'm gonna change it just a little bit, but basically it's the distinction of receiving. When you acknowledge another and they are able to receive it, you are both blessed. When someone acknowledges you and you are able to receive it, you are both blessed. Not just able to receive it, when you receive it. There's a distinction between being able to do something and actually doing it, right? So. I want to take a moment and give us all an opportunity to receive and experience receiving. So I want you to, I invite you, you don't have to, but I invite you all who are listening to me in this moment and those who are listening on the replay, you can do this too. Get into the center of your heart, get into that part of you where we are all connected. Get into that part of you where you are part of Rumi's field. Recognize your own intrinsic worth. And as an act of will declaration choice, open the receiving channel to your heart, to your being. And receive this. I acknowledge you and me for being divine, for being connected to infinite intelligence, for being the breath of life, for being blessing others, for being aliveness, enjoyment, beauty, power. I acknowledge you and me for being the ones who are making a difference in the world for the ones who are being peace in this world, for being the presence of being. I acknowledge you for being loving. And I acknowledge you for being able to receive and for receiving. Thank you guys. Let's take a moment and be with that now. Rafal, go ahead. Thank you for that, Matt, Dave. Thank you for that <clears throat> opening. 
and it occurred to me, um, I wanted to know, I want to ask you, but I also want to share my thoughts. I don't know which comes first, but I wanted to know if you, if you could explain a little bit, how are you blessed when I receive your acknowledgement? Beautiful, Rafal. Thank you. So Katie Byron, who I didn't you know, know about. Until did you do I, that on purpose? Byron Katie, you mean? <laughs> did you do that on purpose? I did not. You oh, segued okay. it perfectly. Uh, thank you for doing that, Rafal. <laughs> she says that if you spot it, you got it. The reason that a person who is acknowledged someone, acknowledging someone else is blessed is that they cannot help but acknowledge their own greatness. Okay. For a long time, I read books and went to seminars and hired coaches, and they were all wonderful. They were all great. They all moved the action forward. And I never, there was always like this thing that was missing, like, how do I become a great one? How do I become great? And this combination of blessing, desiring the greatest possible experience of life for others and acknowledging, which is, which is sharing gratitude and appreciation for that which they already are, it turns out that when I do that, when I am that, the greatness that I see in them is present in me. It cannot be any other way per Byron Katie. So the method to become great is to acknowledge the greatness in others and then to acknowledge the greatness in yourself. So the, 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 the receiving acknowledgement is the space from which acknowledging oneself becomes possible. At least that's how it occurs to me, okay, Rafal? And, and Steve, you can jump in and correct me if I'm <laughs> off base here. When we are able to receive acknowledgement, when we are able to recognize that the acknowledgement we give to others is a reflection of our own greatness, our own intrinsic worth, our own power, our own divinity, then acknowledging ourselves becomes possible. And I'd like to show you what this looks like. I acknowledge myself for being with Penny Orton. You can't see her, she's sitting over here. I acknowledge myself for only having ever kissed my wife. That's something I wanted to do when I was young. And I acknowledge myself for that. I acknowledge myself acknowledge myself for being connected to spirit, the spirit of all creation. I acknowledge myself for being a creator. I acknowledge myself for being loving and for loving all of life and myself. I acknowledge myself for being forgiving and accepting of all and myself. I acknowledge myself for being one who creates sacred spaces. I acknowledge myself for being one who can be taught truth regardless of the source. You guys, you, you're hearing this however you hear this. I am not pumping myself up for ego's sake here. I am being acknowledgement. Rafal, over to you. Thank you, Dave. On that, this last thing you said, I challenge anybody to be in Dave's presence and think that he's pumping himself up. I challenge you. It's worth that investment just to prove yourself wrong. There is no way Dave is so pure, is so pure there. So no one was thinking that, Dave. At least I don't see how that would be possible. What occurred to me, I want to share these three things that occurred to me that might have answered my own question a little bit. When you acknowledge me or when I acknowledge anyone, that builds me as a person, regardless of the, if that person can take that in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so that, go, go ahead. Like you said, the being acknowledgement grows me 
and I get to see that in myself. And that's not dependent on the person receiving it. And there are two things to address the person receiving. If somebody, if I have an issue receiving acknowledgement, the work for me to realize is twofold. You, you, you brought up a really great example. You said in your, in your upbringing, like we, we weren't allowed to receive, you have to be self-sufficient. So I think a lot of people can resonate with that because it's almost like we all want to, we're all told or we all want to just give, but, but we don't need anything, right? So there's, there's two things to be said to that. One is if you want to acknowledge others, you want to be a giver, then you have to accept that somebody's going to be receiving. And if you don't allow yourself to receive, then it doesn't allow the giving to be. There's a wonderful book. It's called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. And it has the law of receptivity in there. And um, you can think about this. A, a, a person, I've thought about this for lo long, long times, and it, it blows my mind every time. Um, you can think about it simply like I just told you, or he goes all the way back to the creation of the universe. The oxygen we get comes from the trees who are putting that out and they take the carbon dioxide that we breathe out and they bring that in. And that's a cycle that has to be our giving is a receiving and our receiving is a giving and you can't have one without the other. So it is not possible. Like you said, it doesn't work that way. It's not sustainable to just be a giver and not allow the receiving to be there. If I say, oh, I don't deserve that acknowledgement. I push that away. Well, then how do I expect someone to accept my acknowledgement? I'm creating a system that, that stops, that breaks in the middle. There's a break. So your act of receiving allows, and that's where I understood what you were saying, that we're both blessed by receiving the acknowledgement because we are creating that cycle, which is a fueling cycle. And that's amazing. And so I love that aspect of it. Thank you, Rafal. Can I can I take on that take that and run with it for a little bit? Yes, just one last thing. Go ahead. You could also think about it really, really simply. If I come to you and I bring you two of my famous Pavlovas, and you say, "Oh, thanks so much, but I don't want it," it's like, what? Okay, I'll do my own work how to not get offended about that. But I, I'm giving you a gift. So if somebody deflects your acknowledgement, if you don't accept the acknowledgement, you're, you're hurting the other person. It's, so allow yourself to be great just to make that other person feel good. That's, those, that's what came up for me. But yeah, you can run with that. And, and then got to get to Ben's hand is up. Beautiful. Thank you. So the, the first, I'm going to talk to the second thing first. So I don't drink alcohol. Uh, and one time I, uh, my dad and I helped this guy on the road and he gave us a, as a thank you, he gave us like a, 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 a 24 pack of Bud Light. My dad doesn't drink either. And I was young and he showed me this. He, my dad showed me how to love people, even when we don't have the same point of view. He's like, thank you so much. And he took the beer and he put it in the, the back of our car and was like, dad, you took beer. We don't drink beer <laughs> and he's like david he was being kind to us he was he was saying thank you we received that and we went and dad had a friend who drank beer and he dropped we dropped off the, the the 24 pack of bud light and everybody wins everybody was blessed that day so yeah. even if even if there's something that we you know accepting and receiving bless everyone right so the with that in mind, I'd also like to point to something that um, that showed up. There's two statements I'd like to share from my I, from my document. The first one is that I am acknowledging I'm enrolling others in and acknowledging them from their greatness. That is the source of my acknowledgement, my being acknowledgement. The second one is, and I kind of took this from Steve. You may hear it in there. 
no one is worthy of my condemnation and everyone is worthy of my love. I don't know how to not judge people. I don't know how to ju not judge myself. And there's a distinction between judging someone and condemning them. When I find myself judging someone, and this happens, it happened yesterday, Penny and I were. <laughs> I know, I, I give that impression. <laughs> Penny and I were at the, at the airport and, and the, the shuttle came by and the guy jumped out and took our bags. And then we discovered that there wasn't room for us in that shuttle and we had to wait another 20 minutes. And I'm immediately like that, I mean, like, and Penny's like, Dave, God, God, calm down. We just, this is, this is, it's good. It's working out perfectly. I'm like, yes, okay, that's right. Not worthy of my condemnation, worthy of my love. And what can I acknowledge this guy for? I can acknowledge this driver for wanting to be of service even when there wasn't room in, in the inn, if you so to speak, I can acknowledge the the uh, the passengers for for being patient and not yelling and screaming when two more people tried to squeeze in there. There wasn't room. And the not only the the condemnation, the desire to condemn, but also the judgment evaporated in that moment. I don't. So far as I can tell, it's not possible for acknowledgement or blessing. And, and judgment to exist in the same moment. I cannot simultaneously see the beauty and the gold in a person and, the, and hate them in the, in the same moment. So as a possibility, being acknowledgement, especially in the moments when, you're, when I'm not, is a way to bring peace and, and, and love to my world and by my world i mean that which surrounds me the people that are in that i can see you know the people that i'm i'm with it's a it's a method and a, a way to bring peace to the world so that's uh i wanted to 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 share that um we have just a few minutes left i wanted to share one experience if i may and it, this was a sacred experience it happened uh the day after the london being experience. And Penny and I were in London and we went to, uh, we were invited to this small get together with some people. And some of those people are on this call. And we had some fantastic food that was prepared by Master Chef Philip Bartu. And we had uh, some time to just sit and be with uh, Alan Thompson and, and several other people were there. And, and Rebecca Holt was there. And uh, you know, it, it, it was fantastic. It was beautiful. And then I was moved at some point in the evening after we'd been laughing and playing and a little bit horsing around to just make a request to acknowledge everybody there. And so I sat and I acknowledged each of the people in that room. And it was a It was an experience that kind of defies language. It, I don't really have words for it. Sacred is the closest word that I can come to, but it was a space where I was, we were, we are appreciated, valued, divine and recognizing the divine in each other's presence. This was a, an experience over which I will never get. This was the kind of experience that I had when I was in Steve Hardison's office. It's this kind of experience when I was in that room that he and Amy are in, that's Amy's office, by the way, with, with my family in May. Guys, we have the opportunity to be that in the Facebook group, in the Instagram group, in the uh, LinkedIn group, in the, the book readings, in all of it. And my invitation to you is to be acknowledgement and see what happens. See what unfolds in your life and be ready for miracles and expansion and all, all the tides to rise such that all the boats around you and all the people around you are uplifted and blessed just because of who you are being. With that, I wanna hand it over to Ben for any, any other thoughts he may have and, and, then, and then Rafal and Possibly, Steve. Thanks, guys. Hey, Dave. I'm very grateful to be here with the number one acknowledger in the world, 
in Dave Autumn. Thank you, Dave. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rafal. Thank you, everybody. I was sat down yesterday and I wrote a couple of quick things that I want to share with you about self-acknowledgement. And it is the ultimate acknowledgement of self is living life at your full potential. That is self-love. That is the ultimate expression of self-love. As a possibility, self-acknowledgement through action is the ultimate expression of self-love. Loving you all. Thank you for being you. Thank you both so much. What a beautiful gift. We have 20 minutes left to this portion. So if there is somebody who has a question for either Dave or Ben or Steve or Lindsay or me or anyone, if anyone has something they wanna they wanna add or contribute, now is a opportunity for you to do so. And Darla wants to know, Ben, if you can repeat that quote. The last quote that I said. Yeah. Or it could have been the next. It could have been the last twenty minutes. I, I... <laughs> Don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> we can ask infinite intelligence what they want to know now as a possibility self-acknowledgement through action is the ultimate expression of self-love yeah i love that Thank you, Lindsay, for putting that in the chat. The quote is there. Ben did not copyright that, so you can all take it and put your name on it. Sorry, Ben, too late. Better luck it's next yours. time. Take, take it with you, please. We it's have, we have uh, Steve and Shirlene. I see your hands are raised. Shirley, why don't you go ahead? Uh, you go first, and if someone else goes, I'll go last or not go at all. But you go ahead. Shirley, okay, you're unmuted. Uh, no, we can't hear you. Shirlene, I think it's on your end. I, you are unmuted. It looks like Shirlene's having some difficulties. I'm so sorry, Shirlene. Um, I did want to, um, this is hilarious. I didn't realize that we didn't have that we had more time. <laughs> All right. So then, do we want to go ahead with Julie? Shirley said she's going to work on it here. So okay. if we want to have yeah. Julie go ahead. Um, go ahead, Julie. I do. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. I just want to know before we get to Julie. Um, Larry Kirby asked in the chat. Um, I think Dave or Ben, you can address this. Says, do you have any thoughts in creating a habit of self acknowledgement? Sure, Ben, I'll go first and then you can hit that one if you'd like to. The, 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 for me, the best way of acknowledging oneself is to create one, your document. You see, the document is an acknowledgement of self in the possibly the most pure form. Uh, I love that. So when I say I am endowed with godly vision connected to the spirit of all creation, that's, that's an acknowledgement of myself to myself. I'm also speaking it into you know the universe and and into the listening of those that I share it with. Uh, so that would be the first thing I would recommend there and possibly the most powerful. Ben, what are your thoughts? Took the words right out of my mouth there. Thank you. I love that. Thanks for reframing it that way. That's a great way of looking at it. Uh, Shirley is actually going to go now, Julie. So uh, Shirley is ready to go, and then we'll have Julie go, and I'll, un I'll unmute you, Julie. Oh, 
Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. I forgot I need an external mic with this computer. <laughs> I just, uh, Dave, what you just said was the light bulb moment that I had uh, when you were acknowledging yourself. To me, it sounded just like your document. And my light bulb moment was, oh, you know, we typically repeat our document with I am, I am, I am. And I, my light bulb moment was, I want to start repeating my document as I acknowledge myself for being. And so thank you for that. That was just a beautiful moment for me to recognize that. Thank you so much for sharing. That's beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now Julie, you're up. Thanks, Shirlene. Hey. For Dave, I have a question about, you've had experience with depression. And when you meet somebody and you feel like you want to give something to them and you see they're going through depression, what is like the single most important thing that you can give to somebody who's in that, the throes of depression? That is a powerful question, Julie. Um, so Ben and I have both been in the depths of hell of depression. We both experienced, I mean, he experienced a, a greater swing of loss, <laughs> but I experienced a great, a, a good deal of loss as well as part of my path of, of becoming who I am. Um, and for, for me, the, the beauty of that is that I have great compassion for people who are in the depths of depression. The thing that I think that I would give is to listen for what they can receive. This is kind of funny. Uh, when I was coaching with Steve Hardison, I was in the middle of some pretty bad depression. And my first thought when I went to, to him was, Steve, please fix me. I want to be, <laughs> I want to be back to where I was before. I don't want to be here in this terrible place where I am. And he's like, you can count on that. We're not going to be doing that. It's not what he said. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, and you may have said that. And we went about creating who I am as a possibility. And that possibility became, went through the gestation process to my being who I am now. And, and, and there's still, you know, there's still things where I'm, I'm, I'm not the fulfillment of, of my possibility. You know, it's where I'm, I, I'm no longer an acorn, I think, but I'm not yet a majestic king of the forest oak tree or a forest of oaks. But I am, I am a maturing oak, if you will, you know. So when you're dealing with uh, someone who's in the depths of depression, loving, acknowledging, acknowledging the lovingness that they are, I think is possibly the most powerful thing. And acknowledging that they are in a moment where the world occurs to them as dark and they're still breathing and they're still moving forward and they're still making the effort to get out of bed and still making the effort to function. That's very acknowledgeable. Now, if the question is, how do you get out of dep depression? Well, I can tell you what doesn't work. You can't serve your way out of depression. You can't exercise your way out of depression. You cannot... Uh, you drink, does drinking work? You can't drink your way out of depression. That that's, <laughs> you know, um, and blessing and acknowledging if, if they can be, I know that notice that when I was in that, I would see glimpses of light and spirit, even through all that time. Mm -hmm. And it was most visible when I was blessing and desiring the well being, well being for others, and acknowledging others for their kindness to me. My depression was the moment where I learned how to receive because there was no other option. So those doors, you know, you can actually, we can choose to open our receiving channels or we can choose to force God, the universe, whatever it, that is what it, for you to force us to open them. And he can put so much pressure against the doors that they slam open. And that hurts like hell, pardon my language. Or we can choose to open our hearts to receive and choose to receive the gifts that we have. <laughs> the, the gifts that, that are trying to be given to us. So I don't know if that answered your question, Julie, but I would also recommend that we let Ben answer that question because he, he's been there too. 
Is, are you okay with that, Julie? Awesome, Ben. Thank you, Dave. I'll give a simple answer. Connection. Being there with somebody and allowing them to see that they are enough just where they are right now. And that there is no need to change, that there is no need to get to anywhere else. It's okay to be not okay and to love that as well. So to acknowledge that you're not okay is an acknowledgement. It's to say, hey, you're not okay. I'm gonna love you anyway. So if I approach somebody who's depressed or I approach me 20 years ago, just after I tried to take my own life, I'd be like, is everything okay? Do you wanna talk? I'm here for you. You're enough, you know you're okay just as you are. You don't need to change. And it's that humanity of allowing somebody to see themselves just as they are without needing to change. That's what worked for me. Beautiful. Thank you. Lindsay, did you, I think I saw something that some, uh, somebody asked a question. Yeah, chart. it looks like Sobia, um, do you, Sobia, would you like to ask it um, here live or would you like us to ask it for you? Uh, thanks, Lindsay. I just wanted to add something to what Julie asked, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So the times, the difficult times that I went through with life, I had friends who were messaging or asking, can I do something for you? Then I had friends who cooked homemade food for me warm and delivered it to my house because I had a family to feed. I think that was the biggest act of self-love or self-acknowledgement or acknowledgement from another person in action that I received. So now when I hear a friend's child is sick, somebody, something happened at work, some, somebody passed away, I don't ask a question, can I do something for you? I just cook homemade food for them, which is warm, and I just deliver it at the door. So that's what I have found. Just wanted to share that. It's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, there, there are, we, when you're in, and you've experienced this, Sylvia, I can hear it. When you're in the depths and somebody says, what can I do for you? You don't have the energy to even consider, <laughs> well, you could come and do my laundry, but that would be weird. <laughs> you could mow my lawn, but that would be weird. You could put $10 million in my bank account and I would appreciate that, but that would be weird. What can I actually ask? What can I ask for? What? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go back to bed now. Thanks. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah. showing being loving as, as service, just showing up and, and it can even be just showing up and holding, having a conversation, face-to-face -face conversation. It can be, uh, you know, delivering you know food is wonderful i don't know what it is about food that makes it such a powerful <laughs> tool but I, a a warm hot delicious meal is a beautiful way to serve there there are people that i'm, I'm reminded of this woman who uh so you know I, I i have the same religious background as as steve and, and actually also julie hart westover um and this Jehovah's Witness woman showed up at, a, at a, a woman's house and just said, God told me to come and help you. She just knocked on the door and walked in and didn't preach, just went about cleaning up the, the front room and take, helping with the kid. And this woman was in tears. And this woman was like, how did you know that I needed this? And this, this woman who had a completely different background, completely different, you know, or a slightly, whatever it is, different point of view on God, the universe and everything, didn't have any bones about that. She just came in and served. And that's who she was being in that moment. I, an angel of God is how that occurs to me. Powerful stuff. All right, Lindsay, who's next? Is it, is it Yogi? Um, yeah, uh, do we wanna, um, there's, looks like we have Yogi and, um, Andrea and Steve, and we have five minutes left. So Rafal, um, how do you want to proceed 
moving forward. Well, well, what's your intuition telling you? My intuition? Yeah. <laughs> Um, my intuition is to uh, go with who is next up here. And that's Yogi, it looks like. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Am I muting you now? <clears throat> Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you, everybody. And Dave and Ben, this has been amazing. And one thing I really got was like, listen to what they can perceive. That was beautiful, Dave. Thank you for sharing that. And one question. I have is, you know, I think I love this acknowledgement piece, like acknowledging, but sometimes I don't see anything anything to acknowledge. For example, in, in, in Steve's story, the, this whole letter is full of criticism and this person was able to see the penmanship. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what, like in the moment, is there something I can go through? Like, okay, you know what? I don't see anything to acknowledge, but okay, I'm gonna do this to find something to acknowledge. Because when I'm in the grip of that, like kind of the ego ride, I mean, I just don't see it, I don't see it. There's nothing to acknowledge. And whenever I can find it, it's really beautiful. Just yesterday, somebody was criticizing and just I, like they were just they're off base and I was able to say, oh, I really appreciate, I love your attention to detail. And, it felt good to say that because that was true. That's the part I could see that. But how, how, what would you recommend? I guess one one do or any process you can suggest that would be wonderful for you. Thank you so much. Excellent, excellent example. Well done, Yogi, and excellent question. Um, first, uh, the first thing that occurs to me is to choose to be and declare yourself to be acknowledgement or acknowledging. The second thing is that that what that enables that being that seed of being produces the fruit of listening for the gold in whoever you are with. So listening for that which is of value and resonating not from your mind, from your heart. You know, that example of, of uh, that Steve gave of the missionary blew my mind. That was actually one of the things I was going to cover, but Steve already beat me to it. It was fantastic. I loved it. That master of leadership was listening for the gold in this situation, listening for the gold in that person. So that's my, that's what occurs to me. Thank you for the question. I want to just add to that, if, if I may, Dave and Yogi, what, what occurs to me is when, when, especially Yogi, when, when something seems so negative, and I love, we can keep referring to that letter that, that, that Steve mentioned, but something so negative to me, it occurs first to pull myself out of this, that it's not about me. And when I see another person, you know, you can have compassion and there's this recognition that everybody's doing the best that they can. So if somebody comes at me all angry and upset and I can pull myself out that this is not about me, I can acknowledge that they're so, that they're, they're a living person, that they're so passionate about something and just admire their passion. Like, I just, you know, if, if someone's coming at you that you did something wrong, it's not what they believe in. So I can honor your commitment to what you feel is right. I love how much that's bubbling out of you. But to me, it comes first with pulling myself out that this is not about me. And I see another person, another human being, they've got a whole life just like I do. And, and they're even taking the time to, to yell at me like they have like they're they're not going about their life they're actually investing in me to yell at me because they want something here and i admire that it's so much easier just to walk away and shut someone out that you don't want to have anything to do with so that's what occurs to me also in that case if somebody wrote me a letter of i would just like thank you for taking the time to write this out like that's awesome okay that's, that's, that makes so much um, sense to me because the time and attention are the like non-renewable resources that when they're giving me their attention and time, even though they are they seem to be criticizing, but but yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. So if we were gonna wrap this up here and we'll have our next segment in 15 minutes. But Steve, you've been waiting so so patiently. And so I want to acknowledge you for your patience and you have your hand rest the whole time. Like that must be very hard. 
it's like a long, strong muscle you have there. Did you want me to say something or are we complete? Yeah, if you, you want to I give our can, closing remarks. I can or... do it in just a few seconds. Uh, one, I would like you to see, thank you for everything you said. You might want to just look at the possibility and think of this over time that acknowledgement is a form of creation available anytime, anywhere. It is literally a form of creation. Then you can play with that over time. The second thing is that as a possibility, listening is acknowledgement. I have been where I've been with a client and you would all know her if I said her name. And I had a, almost a five hour session. And in that five hour session, I did not say 40 words. And she wrote me a three page document that would blow anyone's mind about the love she had and the healing she had. And I just listened. So you might want to see this. You don't have actually have to do something. You can listen, just be present with the person. And the final thing is that when we have people that are depressed or having depression or anything else, it's like, look for what's good about what's going on, including the way they're handling it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. How can you, do, that's a lot you've done. And then to Yogi is um, when you look at another person, if you're real present with them, we all have eyes and a mouth and we're wearing something or smell a certain way. I look for people to just have a beautiful smile and say, what, what a beautiful smile. Thanks for sharing that with me. Or boy, has anyone told you how beautiful your eyes are? And I'm not jiving or complimenting. I'm, man, I look over, people are gorgeous, man. Everyone I'm looking at here is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for those remarks. Those were all very, very valuable. And I, I appreciate that. And thank you all for, for your time and your commitment to being here. Anybody who can keep, keep this going and be with us at our next segment will be amazing. And thank you for being here right here and now. And I'm loving you all. <laughs>